I, Richard Brown, am not trying to make myself equal with God. In fact, the more similar I try to make us, the more dissimilar I prove we are. Whenever I try to compare something, it shows that there really is no comparison. My ability to love does not compare with his ability to love. My ability to give does not compare with his ability to give. My ability to be merciful does not compare to his ability to be merciful. My trying to be perfect and holy like he is, is at best an eternal effort by me not to be left too far behind. The church can be considered an ever version because she has not known any other savior and is still keeping herself pure for the one she has been betrothed to. A woman who has had sex with only her husband is still a virgin in my book, as far as I'm concerned. Because she has not been defiled by any other man. It's weird how some of you have decided for the very first time to become a spiritual warrior to defend the faith and the only reason you're doing it is to oppose me so you don't have to deal with living your faith on a full-time basis like I propose. There will come a time when not even the angels of heaven will be able to protect me and the only way I will be safe and not forsaken is if God himself does it. When the Jews and the Muslims come to believe in Jesus and allow themselves to be ruled by him, then God will be all in all. Sometimes the only way to look up and see the light is to first hit rock bottom. Even I have had to lose my bearings a few times. To realize where I was heading. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Is the resurrection. The only spirits who can return to the Father. Are those who came from the Father. The spirit of adoption you previously received is referring to the part in you that belongs to the body of Christ that allowed you to testify that God is your Father through Jesus until the spirit that was in his Son, the spirit of begottenness, came upon you, which I am now bringing you, that gives you a glorious body like he has, and the right to claim that you are a real son of God also. You either get to heaven on your own merits, or you need a savior to redeem you. And as long as you have committed even one sin, you will need the savior because you are not worthy to be in God's presence. Verses in the Bible that seem to contradict each other about whether Jesus is really God or just the Son of God can both be right if you look at it in the right context. The reason Jesus continually referred to God as his Father instead of coming right out and saying he was the mighty God, is because he was trying to show us how we are supposed to interact with God and what our relationship to God is, while at the same time he left us enough hints 
that showed that it was God himself who was actually with us. If everyone lived by the rule of not throwing the first punch, it sure would make life a lot less violent. If Christ's ascension into heaven included his body and the church is his body, then that would mean we also have to ascend to be seated in heavenly places with him because we are part of that body. Whatever happens to his body must eventually happen to us. The scriptures also state that no one has ascended into heaven but he who has descended from heaven. So therefore, the sons of man who were predestined to believe in Christ must have technically always been part of his body. He is sent so he can raise up the spirits in us so they can be part of the resurrection also. It is because of Christ that our angelic spiritual bodies are able to make the same journeys as they. They are now allowed to freely ascend and descend upon the sons of men. This is not a physical ascension, and the part of you that does ascend will only be fully ascended when you have finally discarded the physical body you received when you became a son of man. The reason Jesus said, where he goes, you cannot come. And if he goes, he will come back so that you can be where he is. Is because it was necessary for him to precede us. So that he could prepare our Father's heart to accept us after we denied him for so long. His heart is prepared. So all it takes now is for you to follow Christ to him. And he will be filled with compassion and immediately accept you back, and you will be with the Father forever. If a Muslim can talk you into rejecting Christ as your Lord and Savior, that means you probably never really had a firm conviction in the first place that he was your Lord and Savior. Muslims know this. And that is why they spend a good amount of time when they are together being indoctrinated with ways to get you to change your mind. They know if they can place a seed of doubt in you by preying on your ignorance, telling you things that just aren't true concerning Jesus, God, and the Bible. They have a pretty good chance of getting you to see things their way. This is a classic case of the blind leading the blind. And you know what happens when a blind man leads another blind man. They both will end up in hell. Receiving insight that you are God's child does edify yourself. 